Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome back to No Clones Garage. On this episode, we're going to talk about designing suspension. I'm by no means a suspension expert. I've done this before, and the vehicles I developed did handle well and were responsive at the limit. That said, I'm sure that I will explain some things incorrectly, I'll oversimplify other things, and I'm absolutely certain you'll disagree with the way I calculate roll centers. Despite that, I do want to bring you along and explain to you the decisions I'm going to make and the things I'm going to consider as I develop the suspension for this vehicle. You may be wondering, why start with the suspension? Why not start with the chassis? Well, it's important that we design the geometry of the suspension, as the force from the tire is going to be reacted through the suspension links and loaded into the chassis through the inboard pivots. As long as we know the location of those inboard pivots, we can design the chassis such that those pivots are located at nodes. Using that kind of design, we'll optimize the chassis for the lowest weight and highest strength. Remember, all the chassis is, is a large complicated bracket that supports all the major vehicle components and most importantly, rigidly locates the suspension so the geometry functions the way we want it to. Now that I've explained why I'm designing the suspension at this time, I want to talk about the many terms that define the geometry a suspension has. For this car, the type of suspension I'm using is a dual A-arm type suspension. The terms discussed apply to all different suspension types, multi-link, strut, solid axle. However, the specific way they're defined does differ from type to type. In order to more clearly communicate the effects some of the suspension geometry changes have on a dual A-arm type suspension, I've created the No Cones Garage Tiny Suspension Understanding Enhancer. Let's pretend together that the wheel is not made out of a cottage cheese container. What are you doing here? I'm from the future. The future? Well, that's encouraging. Well, I mean, it's only been like two weeks. Well, I mean, 2020 is still pretty encouraging. Well, we need to talk about the video. I've been editing it, and it's like 12 minutes long. 12 minutes? That's not too bad. Yeah, but that's just the part where you talk about suspension geometry. You don't even get into all the rest with the string computer and all that. Oh, okay. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to split the video. And right here, you can get a link to go to the video where you can explain all the details of suspension geometry. And then this video will continue on and talk about just the decisions made on this suspension and how we designed it. So you go forth and do that. I'm, I'm going to go back to the future. You guys heard Future Boy. Let's get on with designing. To develop the suspension, you need a mechanism to calculate the geometry of the A-arms. You can use commercial suspension computer programs, Microsoft Excel, CAD modeling, or you can get old school and build a string computer. A string computer is quite literally a scale model of the suspension that allows you to determine pivot points and evaluate the geometry using strings. When I design a suspension, I start with the virtual swing arm length, as it defines the characteristics of the camber curve for the axle. I'll then select a roll center height based on my expected vehicle CG. One pivot is then located, and the rest can be determined from plotting the selected roll center height and VSAL lengths. The remaining pivots are placed on the upper or lower A-arm vectors, where they fit, accommodating for interferences with other main vehicle components. I'm going to talk about the front and rear separately. In the front, I'm going to run a longer VSAL with the lowest possible kingpin inclination and maintain reasonable scrub for the wheels I'm using. I'll use caster to gain camber and cornering. This design will keep the tire upright when I'm pointed straight for braking and just bump and I'll increase camber on the outside wheel when cornering due to the effects of caster. 
I like to run a relatively high roll center as it keeps cornering roll down and doesn't necessarily require use of a sway bar. For this vehicle, it'll have very low center of gravity and so the total moment acting on the roll center will be low. In the rear, I'll run a shorter virtual swing arm length, somewhere around 0.75 to 1 times the track width. The side effect of a short swing arm length is in bump, the tires will gain a lot of camber. You're able to use a geometry called anti-squat to resist camber gain during acceleration. However, again, with this vehicle, the center of gravity is low. So, it's anticipated squat due to acceleration will be low. The roll center I'm going to use in the back will be the same as the front. This, this will work because this vehicle will have a declining roll axis. That means that if you were to slice the car into slices and find the center of gravity of each slice of the vehicle, as you move towards the back of the vehicle, the center of gravity height will go down. Now that we've talked about the theory of how the suspension is going to be designed, let's talk about practically how we're going to do it. So, it can be very difficult to develop a completely cream cheat suspension design. If you have complete freedom and the only thing determined is the wheel and tire, you can place the ball joints wherever you want, you can place the inboard suspension pickups, pickups wherever you want, and it's very easy to get into analysis by paralysis because you can try to optimize the suspension too much. So in many ways, it's oftentimes easier if you start with some stock components because they fix certain pivot points that you just have to design around. And so there's compromises made from the beginning that you have to deal with. So for this vehicle, in the rear suspension, I'm going to be using the stock uprights from the 1996 Subaru that donated the, the engine and transmission. In the front, I've sourced a pair of 2002 WRX uprights. Both of these uprights have the same basic ball joint at the bottom, which I'll re retain for the suspension by cutting off the end of the A-arm like I have here and reusing this sleeve and welding it onto my new A-arm. So, as I said, the suspension design starts with the tires. The tires I'm going to run are 225-4017. And I'm running those tires on a 17 by 7 inch rim. The rims I'm running have an offset of 43 millimeters. So the, finish, the, the final tire dimension is about 25 inches outside diameter with the 43 millimeter offset. Although the offset's not as important as the actual ball joint location relative to the contact patch. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure for both the front and rear where the ball joint location is. grab the critical dimensions from the ball joints. I'm going to go ahead and set aside these parts and I'm going to start making the string computer that I'm going to utilize to design the suspension.
I've marked the wheel, half the track width, and then I've made marks out every quarter track width ratio for the desired uh, VSAL for each end. So we're going to start by putting the tire on. I've got a magnet on the back right at the center of the contact patch. And I did glue some magnets on um, where, based on the ball joints I have, uh, where possible locations are. So we just stick that on, line it up. Um, then we've got the part that represents the chassis. So I put the roll center in. Um, it's five inches, front and rear. And so this represents uh, the, the area around uh, where I think I could put good sized tubes um, longitudinally around the transmission. And so we'll just line that up. Um, I just picked seven inches off the ground, which is three and a half inches off the build table. Seemed to be a good spot. So we get that lined up. And then we're ready to start uh, using the string. So with this way of developing suspension, you start at the ground and you work backwards, assuming that you're going to have force go through the roll center. So we'll get this hooked on. You just stretch this string out through the roll center. Let's go out pretty far. And once we got the bottom force vector string strung out, we need to intersect it with the strings running from the two A-arms. So those are those A-arm extensions. So we'll put hang it right above that. And we'll just go ahead and hook up our lower A-arm. Stretch the string out. Just take a little piece of tape. Hold the string. And then do the same thing with the upper A arm. And then do the same thing with the upper A arm. So as you can see, the two lines from the upper ball joints run through this instant center for my 1.25 track width to VSAL length. So now all I have to do is find the inboard pivots of the A-arms, which will be along this line. And I've marked this with half-inch increments just because it's I might as well pick a half inch uh, to make it easier to fabricate. So you just push the push, push pin in and repeat for the bottom. So now we have an inboard and outboard pivot that line up with our desired instant center and cause our desired roll center. And so we can play with this. We can move, if I take away these magnets that I'm using just to hold this in place better, we can move the suspension up and down and see the tire move. We can tilt it. Obviously with the magnet stuff moves a little bit. So you just got to make sure you reset the ground. A couple quick notes on the ball joints out at the wheel. Um, so when you select the height of the upper ball joint, it's tempting to go as high as possible, um, particularly in the rear. Um, however, you do have to maintain uh, what's called a toe base. 
So you need to have, be able to have you know, your steering link, uh, the link that's going to hold the wheel straight and be allow, allow you to adjust the toe, to have a wide enough um, length that the forces on it are, are relatively small. So if you go way up high on the rim, uh, you won't be able to go very wide because obviously the rim's a circle. So you need to go low enough um, that you'll be able to do that. I actually uh, am able to use a, a spot aligned with the upper strut mount. So in the back, it'll literally just be a, a long um, bolt as wide as I can get for the toe base um, on that. And the other thing, you want to make this as, as tall as possible at the upright. Uh, because obviously since these links converge, um, the, the taller or the shorter they are out there, the shorter they are here. And we want to avoid this geometry being very, very short vertically. Because uh, it's difficult, you know, as these forces come in, the smaller this is, uh, you know, it just the forces start to get higher and higher in all these links. Um, just, just because of moments. So the larger distance you can get, um, it lowers the forces in these and it also makes the geometry a little less sensitive right that the bigger dimensions are um, the less small eighth inch sixteenth of an inch thirty second of an inch um, miss alignments uh, would matter so the bigger we can make everything um, the better it is and the other the other last thing is um, a, a larger suspension tends to work a little more linearly than a small one, right? If these arms are really, really short, um, the suspension, you know, the, the, the range of pivot of this A-arm as the chassis moves up and down will be very high, right? That's, that's three inches, and these arms aren't moving um, dramatically, radially, um, but if they were really short, they obviously would move uh, substantially more. So we want to make everything as long as possible to minimize the angles, um, tall, you know, make it basically as big as you can within the limits of your wheel. So we'll repeat this with the front, um, and then we'll measure, you know, these pivot points and use them to transfer to a template that we can use to actually build the chassis. So you need set up to do the front. Uh, I do have another consideration I have to, to make. So this represents um, the corner of the hood and the front end um, does come down to here. I could potentially cut it you know, and, and move it up. So we're going to see um, how you know, everything looks if we use one of these higher ball joint positions with the upright in its normal direction. Uh, but I think potentially running the upright upside down with the, the stock Subaru upright or ball joint on the top and then the other ball joint down here um, may make more sense. So we're going to lay them both out. I'll go ahead and figure out um, the inboard pivots for both uh, directions. Um, so that way the suspension is designed either way. And obviously with this being as wide as it is, you know, that A-arm length is, is unacceptably short. Um, we definitely need something quite a bit longer than that. As you can see here, when we went to the lower ball joint, we're underneath that. Um, so, you know, I, I think this lower ball joint running the upright upright is going to be the best choice. I can still get, um, you know, the same kingpin inclination, the same scrub radius. Um, it just provides a, a better geometry. So when this upper A arm's, you know, put in, um, the rotation won't exceed the hood. Get these points picked out, and uh, then we'll, we'll be done. We've got the fabrication templates we can use for the front and rear suspension. Um, 
I've marked the holes for the high mount ball joint, the low mount ball joint, so the inverted front, and then the rears. Um, the rears are only one position, the fronts uh, I'll decide, you know, once I start to mock up the driver and chassis, uh, what makes more sense. Um, I've got my wheel um, set up with my various ball joint locations indicated, um, and then I've measured out the pivot points. Um, so now I know, you know, what I'll use to make a wood, uh, a couple of wood templates so I can lay in the horizontal tubes that will, that will provide um, the support for these inner pivots for each of these locations. So I know it seems, you know, that there, this episode didn't have a lot of exciting activities. Um, it was a lot of talking, a lot of information, um, but this is really as simple as I make designing a suspension. And like I said, for my, my MG um, and for previous vehicles I, I've done, uh, this has worked. Um, you know, it's, it's taking what's a very complicated system and distilling it down to some very basics uh, that I've found are the compromises that are easy to make and that are able to be made without really resulting in adverse handling characteristics. Um, so, you know, once you do make those decisions, it makes the layout of the suspension very easy once you know your physical restraints on, on the final items. Um, so, thanks again for joining me. Um, on the next episode, we'll get to, to laying out the driver um, and then hopefully start cutting tubes to start making a chassis. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you.